K's is not new school. It basically looks like a K tattoo that she threw two extra colors in. I'm super happy with how bright it is and how clean it yeah, is. Yeah, it's like half in the color. They're so far off from new school. We've all heard the saying, picture paints a thousand words. Today, the elimination tattoo will do just the same. You'll be using all of your precision skills to create a photorealistic tattoo. Photorealism is probably the toughest thing to do in tattooing. You just have to look at a picture and duplicate it on the skin. Your design will need to look like an actual photo. That means it must have three-dimensional qualities. My client today wants to do a tattoo revealing the inner workings of the body beneath the arm and the collarbone. You want to do some like photo reel like sutures? No, no. This is all the things you could put in there. You could put the bones, the veins, tendons, ligaments. Mm -hmm. He's not really flexible. He definitely doesn't want to allow me to approach this in the most realistic fashion. The only thing I'm concerned about is the skin. If it's just an incision, it's not going to give us photo reel bloody stuff. I don't want dripping blood like it's from the movie from Hellraiser. I am a little stressed right now. I'm getting these clients that aren't the easiest to work with. I could be in for a storm. There is a possibility that they could send me home on this. There aren't too many shots that really show what he wants without all the blood and gore. It's been tough piecing them together, but I have a really good plan. This is what people come to me for. I specialize in photorealism. And even when I'm doing stuff that's completely made up and you know from my own head or from the client's head, I apply a realistic touch to it. All right, you can sit down. My client, he's giving me a list of fruits and veggies that he wants. You can do so many things with fruit and food as far as making it look real. It's going to be a little bit more of an advantage for me. The big thing with photorealism is tricking the eye. You may have a subject that's not realistic, but if you can make the eye perceive that it's actually there and not a flat picture on the skin, then you've achieved your goal. OK, in five, four, three, two, one. And that's it. Time's up. Put your machines down. No more ink. I think that although it's not a realistic subject, I nailed it when it came to getting it accurate and realistic looking. This week, we tested your technical precision skills. Now it's time to see how you did with photorealistic tattoos. Josh, you're up first. How you feel about this? I like it. He was a great client. Gave me a lot of artistic freedom. It was fun. My complaint is this tattoo looks more like a pop art painting, artistically illustrated, other than photorealistic. Proportionally, I think that the avocado seed looks really large in proportion to the rest of the piece. That strawberry is about the size of that avocado. That blueberry is enormous. They're not really proportioned with one another. In order to put good detail in it, I wanted to make each fruit larger so that I could make it more realistic. That's not necessarily realistic. Billy. Does it feel like an illustration? Yes. I think the arteries or the veins look a little bit like tendrils, almost like fantastic, which kind of makes me feel that it's, it has more of like a horror sci-fi kind of vibe. He wanted to avoid doing torn skin. He wanted to avoid stitches. He wanted to avoid anything that I could use to make it that much more realistic. I'm not really blown away by it. Really, have you achieved the goal of the challenge and make something that's photorealistic? No, I don't really believe so. I tried to accommodate him as much as I could in a way that I thought, you know, I could give this guy a good tattoo. I just don't think this tattoo falls into the category of photorealism. Tonight, we judge your technical precision skills with a photorealistic tattoo. Unfortunately for one of you, this will be your last night here. Josh. Do you feel you deserve to be here right now? Well, I guess it depends on what you're going to tell me. I thought that it looked like a really, really nice oil painting, but didn't capture a photorealistic sense of what the challenge asked for. I think I did a good, clean, realistic tattoo. I don't think that anybody can say that the strawberry doesn't look like a strawberry. It does. <laughs> it's just the proportions and everything to make it photorealistic. So you would do a strawberry that little on a hand and leave the rest of it just... Maybe three. Maybe some grouped over each other to make it a little more interesting. If we took a photograph 
that wouldn't be the way the photograph would be, and it was based on photorealism. It just didn't hit the mark. Billy, why do you think you're here? It's an organic piece. I think that's why I'm up here. It's definitely a different take than what I would expect. I was expecting something a little bit more clinical and medical. You know, it's made up realism, but I still try to incorporate that into the realism by, you know, adding the cast shadows and drop shadows to, you know, to give it depth. In terms of what the challenge was, photorealism, I just think it, it missed its mark. It's the card I was dealt. All of you are here because you think you have what it takes to be the next Ink Master. But if you want to compete for the title, you're going to have to prove it first. There are 30 of you, but there's only room for 18 artists in this competition. 12 people are being eliminated right off the bat? We're not screwing around here. You're going to have five hours to do as many small American traditional tattoos as you can. If you do not have the basics and the fundamentals down, you do not deserve to be here. My butt is clenched. It is time to critique your work. Kelly. Slick tattoo, flawless execution, not even near American traditional. If this was the last tattoo, going for the win, you lose. This isn't do your own thing, master. This was also the challenge that I was the most scared for. Please go by definition of what it is that you're asked to do, or you will be a good tattooer that leaves, and somebody not as good will stay because they follow directions. A lot of people got to go. Congratulations on making it through the first tattoo. For this next tattoo, Chris is calling the shots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your live models. Today, I'm looking for you guys to create beautiful geishas. You're going to be using these models and these models only as your reference. Their kimonos are adorned with things that were royalty for kings. You will have six hours to do it. Wow. And since this is Chris's specialty, if he doesn't like what he sees, he will send you home on the spot. You've each been randomly assigned a canvas. And your time starts now. All I give a shit about is the quality of work that they deliver. And if I see people that are talented, obviously that's who I want. Countdown to getting yelled at. I did not meet the American traditional challenge, and through some merciful grace, I am still in this competition. Kelly is doing her own thing. Other than the hair do, yeah. there's the only thing that says geisha. It's like all these people, everybody does their one thing. It's all fine and dandy when you're at home. Yeah, this isn't home, that's for sure. The ability to do a mass execution is liberating for us. If you don't want to listen to your fast pass, get the f out. Time to critique your work. Let's start with Kelly. You do beautiful tattoos. They're slick, but completely not Japanese. It's not feed me your style. It's feed me the fact that you can do all styles. All right, guys, bring it in. This is what you've been battling it out for. One of these 18 shops. Team scares the out of me because I am a lone wolf, not a team player. You guys ready to choose the first half of your teams? Miss Kelly Dottie. Kelly's an amazing artist. Even though I didn't like what she showed me the entire two days of this whole competition, I know exactly what we're looking for. If they listen, I can give them the keys to the kingdom. There are two challenges so far where Kelly specifically did not follow directions. Maybe I should have just said, hey, F everybody. Today, you must tattoo whatever your canvas wants in some of the most difficult places. Oh, no. From heads and necks to armpits and butts, it will take creativity to design a tattoo that fits the body part perfectly. I don't want to touch a butt. Let's meet your canvases. It's one thing when canvases want a crazy idea, but when they want a crazy idea on a crazy body part, that makes it twice as hard. A black and gray Japanese style frog on my butt. You don't realize how much that ass hurts. Today, our artists are going to be challenged on placement. What do you think? Just dead smack right here? Oh, yeah. Inexperience makes different locations on the body harder to tattoo than others. I don't even think the knee's that bad. I got everything tattooed. You don't have your dick got tattooed, my feet though. feet tattooed. Huh? I got my balls tattooed. <laughs> First line, it's like, oh my god, what am I doing? If you are not used to tattooing an armpit or not used to tattooing a butt cheek, 
and you don't know how to stretch the skin, how to place your canvas, you will have a hard time in these tattoos. I like this design a lot, dude. Don't blow up my head, Christian. <laughs> I've been at the bottom a lot. I'm feeling a lot of pressure to make this tattoo really stand out. Just have fun with it, man. Yeah. You've been waiting for this. Yeah, I have. My canvas has some stretch marks on his butt. When you're pulling your line and you run over a stretch mark, it almost shifts your liner. This can screw everything up. I have a tattoo right here. Yeah. That's not my ass. I mean, I can honestly say that Tim's JP's, Jess's, they're not an ass tattoo. That's a hip tattoo that kind of wraps a little on your ass. You don't meet the challenge, man, you lose. Yeah. I mean, I know that for a fact. Today, you are being tested on creativity, tattooing difficult body parts. Tim. What placement did your canvas ask for? Ass. I'm an ass man, and uh, that ain't no ass tat. That's straight up ass right there. This is my ass. Other than the placement, I love this tattoo. I love the line weight. I love the cleanliness of this tattoo. I like the use of the light blue in the tattoo to show that the horse is white. Do not yourself out of wins by not putting things where they're asked. That's an ass. That's the front of her leg. You're an ass. Jess. It has some nice detailing in the rose, nice shape, but a little light on creativity. Definitely a little light on being on the part of the body where it was supposed to be. You guys all know where the ass is on the body? Questionable. I would say you're definitely in the running for hoping somebody up more than you do. Falls a little short for me. JP. What was the placement? Placement was ass. That ain't no ass, dude. This is insane. It's a creative illustration, but it's a little tonal. It took me a minute to find the toad. I do feel that this is the strongest tattoo that I've given you guys so far. This is a vast improvement. But placing this on an area where you have all these stretch marks was really tough to get a smooth, consistent fade. When you're riding over this wobbly stuff, tighten it up. Today, you must push your creativity to the limit and create a new school food tattoo. What? What's going to show off color theory more than a new school tattoo? They're super colorful, bright tattoos with a lot of dynamic shapes. I'm down to eat that up. We want something that's going to be bold and graphic, but it's going to give us a playful look at a food tattoo. Seriously? Let's meet your canvases. A New Orleans beignet with powdered sugar. What? A beignet? What the hell is that? Isn't that the thing that washes your butthole? Beignets don't really look like anything. Just like big crust. Tattoo powdered sugar, bro. That's easy. <gasps> Canvases, one by one, please read the artist's name on the bottom of your skull. OK. Hi. A beignet is a brown pastry with white powdered sugar on it. And this is a show color theory. New School takes the element of what it is and then stretches it, warps it, adds faces to it, makes them into living characters. They're fun. Doing a crawfish? Yeah. What colors are they typically? Like reds. When you have something that's fun, it's like a child's toy, it should be bright and vibrant, and it should make you smile. I gotta play with color a little bit on this thing. Maybe some like blue light on the top of yeah. it, just a little bit. If these artists can't nail what piece of food we're looking at, then they've already lost. You wanted beignet? Yeah. All right. With um, powdered sugar. Okay. I'm worried about Kay and Jessa. Chicken and waffles. This is like one of my favorite foods. Oh, perfect. Um, both of the images are brown. There's not a lot of room for color play there. So this is a color challenge. Are you into me incorporating like a second flower with it? It's the curse of the golden skull. You get skull picks and you f it all up. How do I make it more weird, Jimmy? But you got to make it exaggerated somehow. The cup of coffee should be cartoony. I learned how to draw a coffee mug so it looks like a coffee mug, and now I've got to like bend it all over the place. And whenever I try to distort it, it just looks wrong. Like, not cool, just bad. I feel like the more I draw this cup, the less I like it. Make it like shorter and fatter. OK, so I should just redraw the whole thing. Don't, don't redraw the whole thing. All right. Don't stress out. It's just frustrating. Off we go on this cute little munchkin. I can't wait. So, it's a basic drawing. Oh, wow, um, so cute. Super bright colors. Yeah. Um, I actually don't like coffee. Okay. So, could you yeah. change it into like a jar of jam? Let me think about that. 
also, and I think this is like, I don't like coffee. Can you change that to a jar of jam? <laughs> what? Just right now? Yeah. New school is like the antithesis of what my natural style is. And I'm trying not to panic, but I'm just kind of losing it. I'm stressed out. I think if I had to get a food tattoo, I would get some sort of pasta. My tattoo was the chicken and waffles, but I've changed it to waffles and ice cream. At least I've got some color in there to make it pop. You could use some sort of glow, just like a lighter pink. No matter what, this waffle is going to look really flat because it's almost the same color as her tan. And that sucks, dude. I didn't just leave my family and leave my shop to come here and get eliminated because I got given a waffle. For the love of God. Everybody's already started tattooing. I can't sit here for six hours and draw and redraw this. Like, I've got to get started. All right, ladies. All right. This is what we get for you. Oh, my God. A little jam jar in That's there. That's so cute. I know that I'm not going to hit new school, but I don't know how to do it any better, so I better <laughs> slay color theory. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it, machine's down, time is up. No more ink. I think he struggled the most. You can tell that they've never drawn anything cartoony. Oh. Jess says it's just applied bad and it's kind of drawn bad. K's is not new school. It basically looks like a K tattoo that she threw two extra colors in. I'm super happy with how bright it is and how clean it yeah, is. Yeah, it's like half in the color. They're so far off from new school. Today, you had to show color theory with a new school food tattoo. Let's see how you did. Jessa. As far as color theory here goes, there's no pop in this. It's flat, it's boring. The transition of magenta to pink, it looks like sidewalk chalk. For what it is, it should be blasted with color. And these colors really just play into your canvas's skin tone. You can do color palettes that are not the real color palette of the real thing. You just don't hit the mark on this one. OK. What did you do in this that you thought was new school? Exaggerating the shape of the top flower and the shape of the jam jar. I don't think you made an outrageous shape of anything. It looks like a painterly life study. 